Oligopoly. Oligopoly refers to a market dominated by a few large firms. Oligopolists may have considerable power to fix prices and output. Power is concentrated in the hands of a few firms who can dominate a market to gain excessive supernormal profits. The degree of concentration in a market can be measured through concentration ratios. Here, the top three firms have a combined market share of 90%, making the market highly concentrated. Oligopolists are dependent on each other for their success or failure. They are interdependent, an action by one affects the others. Oligopolists may collude or compete with each other. Collusion means acting together for the mutual benefit of all firms. Collusion may be open, referred to as overt, or may be covert, which means agreements are reached in secret. Finally, coordination may be based on shared rules and understandings, referred to as either tacit collusion or concerted practice. For example, oligopolists may employ standardized and industry-wide pricing models, such as cost plus pricing, which mean that any increase in general input costs translates into identical price increases without the need for any overt and illegal price-fixing arrangement. If oligopolists do compete, then they clearly prefer non-price competition. Non-price competition includes special promotions, including offering gifts or running competitions, offers such as buy one, get one free, competing on the quality of the product, its design and its brand image, competing on service levels, guarantees and warranties, Oligopolists dominate the high street and include commercial banks and building societies, petrol retailing, cinema chains, and supermarkets. In all these cases, four firm concentration ratios are in excess of 75%. Interdependence can be understood by looking at the oligopolists' kinked demand curve. If a firm raises price, say from 10 to 12 pounds, rivals will not follow suit as they will gain an advantage by holding their price constant. Hence, the price-raising firm loses market share and loses revenue. Demand is relatively elastic. Reducing price may lead to retaliation, as rivals are forced to drop their price to maintain their market share. In this case, demand is relatively price inelastic. Revenue is maximised at price P. Profits are maximised when marginal cost equals marginal revenue and are also maximised at P. As marginal revenue falls at twice the rate of average revenue, the marginal revenue curve is split. Any change in costs does not alter the oligopolist's profit maximising position, hence price tends to stick at one price. The kinked demand curve illustrates the significance of interdependence, as well as explain the tendency for price stickiness. Game theory can also be used to explain the behaviour of oligopolists. All games have rules and payoffs, and require players to have strategies to enable them to gain a positive payoff or avoid a loss. The Prisoner's Dilemma is a game that can provide insights into the behaviour of oligopolists. In this game, Two associates, Bill and Bob, have been arrested for a petty crime. They are placed in separate cells. The police officer conducting the interviews suspects them of a more serious offence, although the evidence of their guilt is weak. They are told that if they confess to the serious crime, they will each get three years in jail. However, if they deny this, they will go to jail for two years for the lesser offence, of which there is strong evidence of their guilt. But. If one confesses and the other denies, the one who confesses will get just one year, but the one who denies will get ten years in jail. The dilemma is clear. The least risky solution is to confess, because denying and have your associate confess gives the worst possible jail sentence. Both players predict the other will confess, hence they both confess. This is the dominant strategy. Confessing is also Nash Equilibrium, named after the late Nobel Prize-winning economist John Nash. 
Nash equilibrium occurs when any change of decision by a player makes that player worse off, taking into account the action of the other. Once having confessed, prisoners will carry on confessing. If this is applied to a decision by firms, we can see that the interdependence of each firm forces it to make certain decisions. For example, airlines have to decide about how to compete and what prices to charge for their tickets. In theory, both raising and lowering price could make them better off. It all depends on what decision the other airline makes. If we assume there are just two airlines, airline A and airline B, they can either raise or lower their price. The dominant strategy will be to lower price to gain £45 million. If one raises price and the other lowers, the firm's raising price will lose market share and only achieve £10 million in profits. However, if they collude and promise not to cheat, they can both increase their prices together and maximise their joint profits at £100 million. Of course, this is where a regulator can enter the market to impose a fine on firms caught colluding. In this case, a 12% fine would be sufficient to provide a disincentive to collusion and to jointly raising price. Taking into account the fine, the net gain from colluding at £44 million would be less than from openly competing on price. Hence, regulators can exploit game theory to alter the behaviour of firms to deter them from undertaking anti-competitive practices. The likelihood of colluding and acting against the interests of consumers can also be reduced by offering an incentive to a whistleblower. What is clear is that, as Adam Smith noted in the late 18th century, people of the same trade seldom meet together, even for merriment and diversion, but the conversation ends in a conspiracy against the public or in some contrivance to raise prices. Modern economic theories shed much light on such price-fixing behaviour, as well as provide regulators with a toolkit of concepts and strategies to enable them to understand it and deal with it. To see more videos, go to www.economicsonline.co.uk.